Alrighty, good morning, St. Croix Christian Church. Good morning, everybody. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. Um, if y'all would stand and worship with us. Of every song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my Come. 
rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Oh, worship Your holy name. And Day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still, my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name, I worship Your holy name. Worship your holy name. In all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath, it's your breath.
shout your praise and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing praise Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Last time, last time. So oh, come, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered in your name, Father God. What a freedom, what a liberty that is, Father God. Thank you for blessing us abundantly. Thank you for the people that are searching you, Father God, through everything they do. Um, I pray that you just bless us, Father God. Guide us. Guide our every step. Help us to be more and more obedient, Father God. We know that when we obey you, we always end up drawing closer to you, Father God. I just pray that we seek you first in everything you do. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for this country's independence, Father God. I just pray that you inspire our leaders um, to make the right decisions, Father God. No matter how unpopular those decisions might be, I just choose that you give them the boldness to stand by your word, Father God, by your truth. You are the way, you are the truth. You are the life, Father God. I just pray that you bless everyone in this room. Help us to always proclaim your truth, Father God. Live by your truth in everything that we do. Um, just bless these people. Open their hearts. Open our minds, Father God. Open our eyes to see and hear what you have for us this morning, Father God. I just pray this in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's name. Amen. Amen, amen. You guys can be seated. Wonderful. Yeah. Good morning. All right. You try. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. What about saying? I love seeing my family here and responding back with such encouragement. It is a wonderful day to be on this earth, on this side of the grass, as my mama would say. Thank the Lord for it. It's a blessing. And it's always wonderful to see each and every one of you on Sunday mornings. You are always welcome when you come through these doors and you don't really need a welcome because God is here and where he is, you are always welcome. So we thank you for coming today to worship with us. If we have anyone here today that's here visiting with us for the first time, we just ask that you raise your hand so that we make sure we give you a special, special welcome before you leave today. 
Oh my gosh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank go. you so much. Thank you so much. And rumor yeah, has we're trying not to do anything to embarrass you so you don't come back. But just raising your hand so we can say hi when you leave would be wonderful. Well, and rumor has it they may have been here before, but may it's have? been quite a while, right? Well, it's my first time seeing you, so that counts. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly so. We're just so thankful for all of you being here. Today is my favorite Sunday. Right. As you can see, I'm wearing my first Sunday uniform because I get to go to the Lighthouse today. Lighthouse Mission um, is a place where we get to feed the homeless, those who are less fortunate than we are. And I always count it a privilege to be blessed with an opportunity to share a meal with them, and the love of God. So we are very happy for the first Sunday when it comes around every time. We certainly ask that if anyone feels led on your heart that you would like to share in that ministry with us today, we would be more than happy to have you come and volunteer with us. Mm -hmm. It is really just such a, a blessing to be around people that don't know the Lord that gives you an opportunity to tell them about him. I, yeah. I'm just so grateful for every opportunity that he allows me to do that. And doing that through a meal shows his love to them. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, it's amazing to take care of a physical need is what opens up a lot of conversations, as most of you know. And this weekend in particular is a little different because of how yes. the days fall. So uh, we do Lighthouse today, and you can actually, when Miss Bev leaves here and heads out, you can follow her over there, and we'll have you back basically about the same time the service ends. So if you want a service opportunity, that's a great one. We also have one on the West End tomorrow uh, where we participate with My Brother's Table, and uh, that's a great opportunity to once again feed the homeless at lunch. Uh, we usually meet over there around 1130, and you'll be finished up by 130. So a great opportunity to see both those programs in action this weekend. So, uh, But if you are visiting for the first time, or maybe this is your second visit or so, and you would like to give us some more information, there's a couple different ways to do that. Uh, we simply have a, a card that's in the uh, aisle that you're probably setting in. You can fill that out and put whatever information you'd like to share with us, or you can simply text 94000. And if you'll send a text, just put in there, connect us TX. Uh, we'll send you back a quick link, and then you can find out more information about the church, receive the announcements, and uh, find out all these things that are going on in the community. Uh, just an abundance of things as we continue through the summer. We just got off BBS and a few other programs, but uh, the summer is always packed with things to do uh, around here. So speaking of things to do, I appreciate Guillermo's prayer for our leaders. Yes. They certainly need it yes. right now. Thank you for uh, allowing the Holy and, Spirit to lead you. Yes, as we continue to celebrate over this long week of um, independence and emancipation, we just look forward to making sure that we as Christians understand the significance and all that, and that yes. we are focused, and uh, that we pray for leaders even when we don't necessarily follow them, but we pray for God's influence, so uh, really important. And uh, we've got a couple other announcements. Uh, Sean and Jen, if you guys will stand up real quick, we are inviting them, and they have been accepted into the family for membership. So yeah. they have, you can be seated. I won't make you stand or dance or anything. So, uh, but they have been serving in so many different capacities and now are just uh, made it official as part of the family. And uh, a couple others that will uh, be joining the church shortly, uh, Miss Yvonne and uh, her husband. And then we also have Mr. Guillermo has come forward to go ahead and uh, join. So we... We'll have those in a couple weeks, as you guys see the announcements. Um, but we recently had a business meeting, and during that business meeting, we uh, voted on some new deacons. Uh, so Frank's one of the new deacons. We also uh, added Raven and Judy. Uh, so we have about six deacons now, as you've probably seen in the announcements. And we also voted in our community pastor. And Amen. so he sent us a, just a quick one-minute video. If you guys will take a look at this, he just wants to tell you how grateful he is to be coming on board with us. Hello, St. Croix Christian Church, it's Pastor Eric here. I just wanted to send you guys a quick video and uh, just check in with everybody. I am I miss you guys already, and um, we are so excited and so blessed and um, so thankful for the great vote a couple weeks ago, and we're just ready. We're doing everything we can around this place to to get things ready to be there with you 
and uh, working on our, getting our house sold and all those, all those kinds of things. But we are just, we're just ready to be with you. We cannot wait for our opportunity to um, minister alongside you and to love you guys and just to become a part of your family. We, uh, we will see you very soon. Thank you for everything. We'll see you guys. And so a, a big part of them coming on board, of course, um, I mean, a lot of us had to move here, and that is not the least stressful thing that you do in life, a move no matter where. But if you'll be in prayer for his family, they, uh, Robin is his wife, and then they have two children, and so they'll just be trying to figure all those things out. So if you'll just keep them in prayer, um, we would just certainly appreciate that as he comes on board. Uh, if you did want to go to the Lighthouse, they are getting ready to line up back here and roll, so you guys can go with them. Um, and we will go ahead at this point and continue worship with offering. Uh, each and every Sunday, we take an op opportunity to give back just a small portion of what God's given us uh, as just part of our ministry. So if you would, bow your head and close your eyes. Just say a quick prayer over us. Dear Lord, we are grateful and thankful to be here today and to um, have so many great opportunities, and uh, just for your grace and mercy in our lives. And uh, so many times uh, you ask us throughout the Bible to trust you in this particular area and uh, that you never fail us. There are testimony after testimony about just simply tithing that 10% or making that offering uh, where you abundantly refill our bucket over and over and over again. And uh, by giving back to you, uh, we get to give out to the community and to serve so many other people and make sure that they see your light through us in our actions and um, in the physical things that we can do for them here uh, to get to their heart. And that's what we know you're chasing is their heart. And uh, we just love you for that. And uh, we just praise you and hope you will find these offerings to your satisfaction and just to continue to multiply them. And you know our hearts, and uh, you guide us, and we just thank you for that. In Christ's name, amen. So we do offering really simply. There's some uh, baskets just on these far side over here and on these two aisles, and you'll just pass those through and pass it across. Um, today's message is great. It comes from the 139th Psalm as we continue the Psalms for the summer. And so uh, the message is brought to us by Pastor Lynch, and uh, we hopefully... You guys will get a lot out of the message today. It's, it's packed full of all kinds of good nuggets for you. So we'll let you get to it. Thankful for you guys. Thankful that hopefully you had a restful 4th of July weekend celebrating our independence. Well, I had a lot of hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe get some pool time. I don't know, but I hope you are refreshed. I'm thankful. Uh, for our freedoms. I'm thankful that we get to live in this great country. No doubt we have our challenges. No doubt we're living in complicated times, but we are blessed to live in the freedoms that we have in the country that we live in. And as a church, we always want to show and be a people who are grateful uh, for the blessings of God in our life. One of the blessings of God, one of the people I'm most thankful for is our speaker this weekend. Uh, I'm actually in North Carolina preaching at a church this weekend for a friend. And so I invited a personal friend in my life, Pastor Mike Lynch. Uh, Mike pastors North Star Church in Kennesaw, Ackworth area over in Cobb County, has been there for a number of years, leads a fantastic church. Uh, a lot of our community ministry, what we do in loving our community and serving our community, I learned from watching uh, Pastor Mike Lynch. Mike's been a friend. He's been a mentor. He's been a voice in my life for years. Uh, Mike, his wife, Ann, he's got an awesome family. In fact, his daughter, Mary Michael, serves on our team here at Bethlehem Church in our community ministry. And so it's a great honor uh, that we have Pastor Mike Lynch sharing with us this week. At Bethlehem Church, would you give him a big, warm welcome? Well, good morning, everybody. For those of you I don't know, I'm Mike, and it is a joy and an honor to be at Bethlehem. This morning is one of my favorite churches for a lot of reasons. One, you employ my daughter. She's off my payroll. All right, so thank you very much for that. Number two, Jason and Nan are two people that are incredibly special to me. Nan grew up in my youth group. 
So I've known Nan since I think she was going into sixth grade. She was the one child in the youth group that was nicer than me, all right? And so that was a, one of those kids you're like, this girl never does wrong. She's unbelievable. And she married Jason, all right? So that straightened that out a little bit. But uh, it's such a joy to be here. Y'all are blessed to be one of the churches that everybody looks to to see what does it look like when God's hand is moving. And I just want you to know, you are a blessed people. Would y'all just give a hand to the Lord for all he's doing around you and among you? Well, man, it's such a joy to be here today and to just get to enjoy and wrap up your series. In Psalms, have been so many good weeks. There's so much good there. They give you comfort because some days... To, Things don't turn out great. Some things aren't right and rosy, and, and we go to the Psalms, and we see what it's like to be raw. So my family, I'll tell you a little bit, since I don't know all of you guys, here's a little picture of my family. Uh, this is this my, my wife, Ann. She'll be at the next service. She's heard me preach for a long time, so she did, she's going to wait a little while. So that's Ann and my son, Casey, uh, there, and his wife, Kelsey. And then Jen and Mary Michael that you know is a picture of us last summer uh, at the beach. We take a little vacation as a family together at the beach last year. And so we are just incredibly thankful. Somebody was asking my wife recently, what was your favorite age of the kids? And she said, grown. All right. And so that's how we feel about that. But it's funny. So I remember a couple years ago when Jen and Mary Michael started dating. I don't know if you've had the pleasure of meeting Jen, but Jen and Mary Michael started dating and Ann and I just fell in love with Jen. And you know, they always say that the young man needs to come to the bride's parents to ask for their daughter's hand in marriage. We like Jen so much, we ask him to take her. All right, and so, so we're like, Jen, we love you, man. What's it gonna take? What's it gonna take? And I remember the day he calls me. Jen calls me at my office. He's like, he still calls me, Mr. Mike. He said, Mr. Mike, he said, could you meet me today? I said, well, sure, Jen. When? Two o'clock. Two o'clock? What do you need to talk about? I'll tell you when I get there, all right? And so we met at two o'clock at Starbucks up in Ackworth where I live. And I remember Jen's getting there and Jim was a little nervous, he was a little sweaty. And he said, Mr. Mike, I, need, I wanna ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. And literally the first thing I said was, it's about time. It's about time, Jen, we've been waiting on this. And, and I said, are you ready for this? I mean, because when I give her, I ain't taking her back. All right, are you good? Are you good for this? And he's like, yes, sir, I'm good. I said, how did you know? He said, she's nine of the 10 things I've been praying for in a wife. Nine of the 10. All right, so what's the one she's not? He said, she's not good with money. And I went, you're right, Jen. All right, she's, she's really not good with money. And I, I am to blame for that. But she's all yours now, baby. So today is a day that really does tie into our family because if we can get what prayer is all about, we'll get the personal part that a life and a story with God is all about. So I want you to do me a favor. Take your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 139. Psalm 139, I know they're gonna have them up on the slides. If you've got the Bethlehem app, that's probably a great way to follow along. So no matter which campus you're watching from today, God's story he's written to us that's recorded in the Psalms is here to give you hope. It's here to let you know that you can do this, that when you um, get along in this life, these stories are here. This book is here because it's God's truth as a reminder for us. So first little thing I want you to note in today before we read together, when my prayer life lacks power, it's probably because it's become impersonal. When my prayer life lacks power, it's probably because it's become impersonal. So let's do a little table set right here at the top today. How many of you would say, out of all the things in my spiritual journey, so maybe today's your very first day, like you're kicking the tires, you're trying this thing out, a buddy invited you, a friend invited you, a neighbor invited you, or you've been at this amazing church for years and years and years. How many would say, prayer is still something I struggle with? Raise your hand. 
All right, I'm gonna raise my hand with you because probably out of my spiritual journey, it's the one thing I think I would have gotten down by now. So I came to know Christ at the age of 14 at a great church in Fayetteville, Georgia. And now I'm not 14 anymore, all right? And so I've grown up uh, 50 and none of your business years old, all right? And so I've, I've been on the journey for a while. And you would think by this point, I would have mastered. But here's what I slip into. I slip into forgetting what prayer really is. And this psalm that David wrote, all right, I'm asking you a yes or no question. Did King David have it all together, yes or no? No, he did not. David was a flawed guy. David was a guy that would come out of the gate and do really good. And then David was a guy that would stumble and he did really, really bad. David was a flawed guy, but the Bible says this. David was a man after God's own heart. Why did he say that? Because David figured out something about leaning into his father that you and I, if we can get it, it can change everything about our lives. It can change us if we're a high school student. It could change us if we're off in college trying to figure out our career. It could change you if you're in your 40s and trying to figure out your career, right? And so it's one of those things that if we can get it, it can change everything about us. Would y'all stand with me today in honor of reading God's word? Psalm 139, we're going to read verses 1 through 3 and then verses 16 through 18. I want you to read with me. Oh Lord, you've examined my heart, David says. And you know everything about me. Literally, David says, it's like you've taken a spotlight in my heart. You've examined it. You've seen all the dark spaces. You've seen the parts of me I don't want anybody else to know. You've examined me and you know what about me? What's that word? Everything. There is nothing in my life hidden from you. You know when I sit down, you know when I stand up, you might know my thoughts even when I'm far away. Let's see what he goes on and says. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home, you know everything I do. All right, time out real quick. There is absolutely not a shred or piece of your life he is not able to not only see, but to watch and do. And it's not like a creepy thing. It literally is a picture David's painting of God loves you so much he can't get you off his mind. Because look at what he goes on and says in verse 16. He says this, you saw me before I was born and every day of my life, it was recorded in your book and every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious to me are your thoughts of God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. That is as personal as personal can get. This is not Christmas vacation prayer around the table, right? This is like literally crawling up in the lap of God and saying, God, here I am. And if we can get that, it can change everything about us. So, Wherever you're at today, whatever campus you're at, would y'all just take a second, close your eyes, and I want you to say this to the Lord. God, if you're really this real, be this real to me today. Would you tell him that? Would you tell him today that if he speaks, you'll listen? If 
Father, today, you've got our attention. God, we want to hear from you. We didn't get up to check a box. We didn't get up to just show up and see a friend. We genuinely came today because we want to hear your voice. And God, I want people to walk out of this room. I want to walk out of my space and place today wanting to talk to you a little more than I did when I walked in. So God, do your work in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everybody said, before you're seated, turn around and welcome somebody around you, would you? Welcome them to Bethlehem. Tell them you're glad they're here, and let's get going. <clears throat> so hopefully you got a note sheet on the way in. Uh, or you got a little piece of paper out to scribble on, or you got your app out to type in, or your, your phone to type in. I want you to write this word at the top of your outline. Ready? And the word is raw. It's raw. What I love about David's prayer and what he wrote in Psalm 139 is it's raw. David's not hiding anything. David is not pretending anything. And listen, David, David, David done the pretend game. David had done parts of his life that weren't connected with the Lord. And we learn in Psalm 51 that he just lays it bare. And it really changed everything about David. David was raw. So before I even get into this today, let me, let me say this to you. God can handle your stuff. God can handle your stuff. You want to increase the personal connection you have with the Lord, know this, going into it. He can handle my stuff. So, three things today. Just be real. How can I have a prayer life like this? Just be real. God already knows. He already knows. There is nothing you are gonna tell the Lord that's gonna shock him, there's nothing you're going to tell the Lord that's going to catch him off guard. There's nothing that you're going to tell the Lord that he's going to go, oh my heavens, I took a day off and I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that they weren't perfect. He already knows. I, I didn't know they didn't have it all together. He already knows. Just be real. God already knows. We spend our lives trying to be perfect, not personal, right? We spend our lives trying to be perfect, not, per not personal. So know this, in your spiritual journey, you are never going to be perfect. It's progress, not perfection. You'll get perfected when you get to heaven, but while you're here on this side, you are on a journey, and it's a journey of highs and lows. How many of you have ever left church on Sunday, and Jason just crushed it, and you're like, man, I'm going to change something this week, and by Monday, you couldn't even remember the commitment that you made on Sunday. Raise your hand, all right? You didn't raise your hand. You lied, all right? So you just fell. So we all screw up, right? It's part of it. The reality of David's life was David had done as bad as he could do. And David found out God didn't quit on him. David had reached the bottom. And he found out, even at the bottom, he didn't quit on me. Oh, Lord, you've examined my heart, and you know everything about me. Here's the reality Sitting in the seats we're sitting in this morning, many of you are sitting beside somebody that means something to you. There's probably things that you thought they don't know. There's probably things that have happened in your journey they're not aware of, and we keep it that way because we don't want it to change how they feel about us. We're so afraid for people to see us at our rawest and see us at our worst let me go ahead and let you in on a little secret. He knows everything about you. I want everybody to look at me. And he loves you anyways. He loves you anyways. I remember I was, uh, man, I was a student pastor. I was probably in my early 20s, 
22, 23, and I was going to take a group down to Jekyll Island where we would go to camp in the summer at Super Wow, a camp that I had worked at, a camp that Cindy was a big part of back in the day, and Jason and Nan and our whole crew. And we were going to hear a guy named Dave Busby speak. And so Dave Busby was a hot youth speaker back during that time, and I wanted to take my kids. So we did a crazy thing. So I ordered cassette tapes. Anybody remember cassette tapes? How many of y'all remember cassette tapes? Bless your heart, wouldn't they? As long as the uh, ribbon would stay on it. So I ordered a cassette tape. I threw it in at Dave Busby. I'm driving around the perimeter listening to Dave Busby speak. And I remember a question he asked the audience he was speaking to. If you were to stand toe-to-toe, knee-to-knee, and eye-to-eye with Jesus, what would he think about you? What would he say to you? What's the very first word that comes to your mind? And I'm 23, married, living in Atlanta, leading a youth group. And I remember the very first word that came to my mind was he would be disappointed. That was the word that came to my mind. He'd be disappointed in me because I hadn't had my quiet time that morning. Ann and I were first married. We're trying to figure out life. I wasn't what I wanted to be as a youth pastor And just all the things. I was an athlete. So back, I know you look at me now and go, what happened? It's none of your business. All right. And so, but anyways, uh, so you live to perform, right? You're only as good as your last performance. You only get on the field, not because the coach likes you. He puts you on the field because you perform. And I felt like in my performance as a Christian, I was falling short. He would be disappointed in me. And Dave Busby said this, and I'm telling you, it was the most freeing comment of my spiritual journey outside meeting Christ at 14. Dave said, you know what he would say if he stood toe-to-toe, needing an eye-to-eye with you? He would look you in the eye and say, I love you, I've always loved you, and I'm always going to love you. You're not going to do anything to impress me. You're not going to do anything to win me over. You're not going to perform in a way that makes me happy. I love you. Just be real. God already knows. But it's funny because in prayer, we feel like it's about right words. We feel like we've got to get everything just articulated perfectly. So maybe, maybe this will help. So Ann and I have been married 32 years. Here's a picture of us back in the day. Some of you are like, you'll see her in a few minutes. She still looks the same. You're going, what happened? It's all about the camera. All right. It's all about the camera. But this is us. We had just started dating. This is, I still remember it like it was yesterday. This is a spring break trip in Florida. Ann and her friends drove down. We're in a tournament outside Orlando. And we're at that point of the relationship I just don't want to say anything wrong and scare her away, right? And so we're, we're at that point. So I'm thinking about everything, and it's like the dance of not screwing up, and I don't want to I don't want to do anything that she doesn't like. So she's from West Virginia, and they burn couches. That might burn people, all right? And so I don't want that to happen. And so it's all about just making sure everything's right. Well, we've had two children. They're both married. I've pastored the same church going on. I've been at that church 28 years. I've had two jobs in ministry. One is a student pastor where Nan grew up, and then I moved over to North Star. I've been North Star since 1997. So here's us just a couple months ago at Night to Shine, and a few more wrinkles, um, but a lot of life. Can you imagine if I still talk to Ann like I did when we first started dating, how awkward that would be. So here's what you need to know. Anne doesn't need to use words. She's one of those people in a relationship. She is just quiet and doesn't need to talk all the time. I didn't know that when we first started dating. So I was always saying the right things and trying to keep conversation going. We drove from Atlanta to Lynchburg, Virginia, where Mary Michael was in college, and literally didn't say a word 
the whole way. And we got to Lynchburg and she went, that was the best trip I have been on in years. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Right? Well, it means she doesn't. So for our 25th anniversary, we went, we went on a trip and I said, what do you want for your 25th gift? She said, when we go to this resort, I don't want you to speak to anybody but me. I want you to just be quiet the whole trip. So like on the last day I went, can I speak now? I am dying. All right. There's a couple beside us about to get a divorce and I need to get involved in their journey. Right? So I was pulling over on our trip to Lynchburg. I'm pulling over at rest stops, just meeting people so I could use some oxygen. Right? But I didn't know that 32 years ago. How did I get to know that? Over the course of time, you get to know people. How many of us, our prayer life looks like it did the day we met Jesus? It's very ornate and it's very perfect. He already knows. Say it. Number two, just be patient. God's timing is perfect. Just be patient. God's timing is perfect. Just be patient. God's timing is perfect. How many of y'all would agree God knows what he's doing? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if God knows what he's doing. How many of you would also agree there are times you could help him out on his plan with his timing? All right, raise your hand. That's where I'm at. You know, I know he's perfect. I know he hangs everything in balance. I know the sun is tilted just right. I know if we get too close to it, we'll burn up. I know he's got that. But there are some times if he would just consult with me, we could straighten some things out. Do y'all feel like that? I mean, I got my calendar out. I'm like, Lord, all right, listen, I'm pretty organized. And I like, for uh, if you could just show up by this date, I know your timing is perfect. I'm going to teach that Sunday. But Monday, all right, the reality is I need some things to line up and line up quick. I want you to write down this little thought, and we're going to read the passage. Ready? God's never late. He's never in a hurry, and he's always right on time. He's never late. He's never in a hurry, and he's right on time. He saw the beginning of time at creation and was pre-creation. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He sees the end when it all, when he puts Stores closed up and everything on this world ends and heaven continues. He sees that and he sees your tiny little speck of life in between and he sees mine. The hard part is all I see is this little speck of my life and I feel like I know how it ought to turn out better than he does. His timing is perfect. Everybody listen to me though. But it doesn't mean it's when you want it. We hate waiting. We hate waiting. I hate waiting at the airport. I hate TSA waiting. I hate waiting at a drive through I hate waiting. And I especially hate it when God needs to speed up. Listen to what David said. You saw me before I was born, and every day of my life was recorded in your book, and every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. You did not catch God by surprise. God does not know you're not here. And the things that happen in your life will happen when they need to happen. I want you to write down this word. Ready? This is what it's all about. Trust. Do I trust he's got me? Do I trust it? Do I trust his timing? Do I trust what he's up to? Do I trust that he has my best interest in mind? And that he's working while I'm waiting. Is it wrong to want his timing to change? No. As long as you're willing to yield to his timing not changing. 
How many of you have ever prayed a prayer that God didn't answer at that time and now you look back and you're thankful he didn't answer? Raise your hand, all right? Maybe it was about a job and you're like, I'm so thankful I didn't get that job. Maybe it's about somewhere to live and you're like, I'm so thankful I didn't get there. Maybe it was about a person. Maybe it was a person you thought you were gonna marry. Not too long ago, I was on Facebook and I saw a girl that I thought I might marry and I saw her picture and went, Ooh, Lord, all right, you're good. All right, you are so good. Thank you for not answering that prayer. And you know what happened? She looked at my picture and went, Lord, you are so good. All right, thank you for not, for not answering that prayer. Because we only see this. God sees this. So in every spring, maybe this helps out a little bit. Every spring, I'm a high school pitching coach at a, a high school in Cobb County called Alatoona. And uh, we make, we, we do have done well in baseball, makes a pretty good run. So I spent a lot of time down in the bullpen with kids and, and we're, we're way down the left field line. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good, I mean, it's a big old foul territory. So we're pretty far down the left field line. And every now and again, I feel compelled to encourage the umpire. All right. And so behind the plate, just with his vision and what he sees. And so one game I was down there and I thought, I mean, I'm probably 250 feet away, probably by the time I'm off, but I got a really good view of the plate. It's at an angle, but I got a really good view and there's a ball in the outside corner. I thought it should have been a strike. And I encouraged him like, come on, you know, blue, didn't you, how do you miss that? Between innings, he came down to the bullpen. And he, I said, can I help you? And he said, I just wanted to see if your view is better than mine. I mean, you've been yelling at me the whole game. I was trying to, to see the angle you're, you're shooting at. You know what he was saying? I got a better view than you do, trust me. You know what God wants to say to us sometimes? I got a better view than you do. Trust me. I see it. Mike, I got you. Do I trust him? Number three. Just be still and consider how much God loves me. Just be still and consider how much God loves me. How precious are your thoughts about me? They can't be outnumbered. They can't be numbered. These thoughts, God, you have for me, they can't be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. Been to the beach lately? You got any sand in your socks or shoes or in your car or in other places we won't speak about? And sand's everywhere, right? You can't even count sand. The only thing David could think of to compare God's thoughts of him were grains of sand. I want everybody to look at me. Before you even got out of bed this morning, God couldn't get you off his mind. We don't pray to make God think about us. We pray to remind ourselves he never stopped thinking about us. But Mike, I doubt. Yeah, me too. Mike, I don't understand him, me either. I don't pray so God goes, oh yeah, there's Mike. Holy smokes, I forgot about him. I was on another agenda. I was working on another plan. No, 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 no. He never stopped thinking about you and he never stops thinking about me. You want to change your prayer life? No, he's waiting to talk to you, not for his benefit, for yours. We don't spend time with God because it does anything for our love as far as how much he loves us. He loves you as much today as he's ever going to love you. You spend time with the Lord to remind yourself of how much he loves you. It's for you. And they don't always have to be in a prayer room and in there, those are great. In a prayer closet, those are great. Sometimes it's when your hands are on the wheel and you're driving into work and you're just talking to the Lord. Sometimes it's like we used to do, get on our knees outside our kids' rooms when they were growing up and just say, Lord, protect those kids. They're yours, not ours.
a couple years ago, Dr. Billy Graham passed away. And I think in our generation, there's been two people that I think across the board, people go, yeah, that's as real as it gets. Billy Graham, Mother Teresa. I think those are our two in our generation that you just, you can't even pin anything on them. It, it doesn't matter if it was a talk show or whatever. <clears throat> you just respected them. And I mean, everybody was at Dr. Graham's service. Everybody. Presidents and foreign dignitaries. A lot of people shared and it was awesome. Shared about his crusades where millions heard him. Most impactful one of the day, though, was his daughter. Not Ann Graham, his other daughter. One I didn't, I didn't even know who she was. And she said it this way. I want to tell you about my daddy. She said, I was the one in the family that didn't make good choices. I was the one in the family that I felt brought shame to the family. So I'd gone through a, a divorce and my kids were grown now and I met a man and everybody told me to wait. Don't do this. Just wait. Just wait. And she said, but I was so headstrong. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm an adult now. My kids can't tell me what to do. And she said, literally, I moved. This is her words. I moved across the country and married a man I barely knew. And she said, in about three weeks in, I knew I'd made the biggest mistake of my life. She said, I had to do the hardest thing I ever did was call my mom and dad, who I revere, and say, this isn't working out. I'm coming home. So she said, I got in my car on the West Coast and started the drive to the mountain in Montreat, where her dad and mom lived for all those years. So I was so ashamed. I was so embarrassed. My parents have always done the right thing, and here I am. She said, as my car turned that driveway and the tires hit the gravel, my heart was just racing. What are they going to say? What are they going to do? And she said, I turned and my headlights hit that carport area and the, the, the driveway beside the house and all I could do is see my dad standing there. The man who stood in front of millions and led him to Christ was just standing there waiting on me. She said, I start to open my car door and before I can even step out, he's just got his arms around me. And he said, baby, welcome home. Welcome home. You're home. What a picture. At our darkest moments, what your heavenly father is waiting to do for you if you'll turn to him. Would you pray with me? Father, we make this so mechanical and we make it so hard. And the reality is you just want us. You just want us. You want our attention. You want our passion. You want our love. Maybe you're here today and you say, Mike, man, I, I'm a believer. And I, I, I needed that. Would you tell that, Lord? God, I'm not doing this. I want to connect. I want to lock eyes with you every day. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus. So this is all brand new to you. Can I tell you something? He left heaven because he had you on his mind. He went to the cross so you never had to question his love. Today, he waits on you. He's a gentleman. Man, you just cry out in your heart. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you lived for me. And I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose again just for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my personal Lord and Savior today. After our services are over at every campus, there'll be a team down front to meet with you. God, we give you us, have all of us, consume us and change us from the inside out. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Sort of a beautiful story of um, a modern prodigal son. And uh, if you knew about Billy Graham, I mean, he was such an inspirational guy, but you always knew just by listening to him that he just had a soft and tender heart for all of us. And so amazing to tie that together, but who needed to hear that Jesus just loves you no matter what? I mean, every day, every day. It's amazing. No matter what we go through, no matter what we are faced with, no matter how many mistakes, it never leaves. And we can all relate to the grain of sand. I mean, it's everywhere. <laughs> and it's just incredible. I really hope you got a lot out of this message today. I hope it refueled you. Because that's what Jesus wants. He wants to keep us fueled up on his love and his grace and his goodness for us. And I can think of no better way to celebrate that than for us to move into communion at this time. So if you would, I'll ask the guys to get in place. And if you'll come up and uh, if you prefer to take communion with us, we'd certainly love for you to do so. You certainly don't have to be a member of this church to do so. But if you'd like to come up and grab a communion cup, we'll have them about mid-aisle through and then up here. And then just make your way back to your seats and we'll have a little time of reflection before we read God's word and take this together. So at the beginning of the message, that very first verse, he talks about God examined me, examined my heart. You know everything. This time of reflection, there is nothing you can say to God that will surprise him. It's, it's a phenomenal relationship. And this is what we do to honor it just in these small times where we reflect on how much love he had for us to give his son. And so as you take some time just to reflect, to ask forgiveness, for ask for him to clear out all those negative thoughts, all the things that we have going on in the world that are just not quite right, he will take care of each and every one of those things and give you peace. Take this time and just reflect. from Corinthians 11 1 Corinthians 11 let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is centrally important I have received instructions from the master Jesus himself and passed on to you Jesus on the night of his betrayal took bread having given thanks he broke it he said this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you'll take the bread.
Dear Lord, it's hard to fathom what your body had to go through to make this sacrifice for us. It, um, it's chilling. It's, it's nothing we can comprehend. But once again, just pointing back to your love, no matter what, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice for us. And then if you'll peel back the cup. And after supper, he did the same thing with the cup. He said, this cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. If you take the cup. What you solemnly must realize every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of Jesus. You'll be drawn back to this meal over and over again until Jesus returns. Don't let familiarity breed contempt. So we take this as a remembrance of him, but also in a celebration for his love for us. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for showing us a really simple act to always keep you in the forefront of our lives. Such a simple thing. We can do this anywhere, anytime. We can do it with somebody by ourselves. But you gave us something that we will never, ever be able to forget you. Thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you for the message and your love, your love through Psalms. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you would stand up, the worship team will come forward. If you guys will join in worship. shine upon you be gracious to you Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you Go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you, he is with you. In the morning, in the evening, and in coming, and you're going, and you're weeping, you're rejoicing. He is for you, he is for you. In the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping. Rejoicing. 
for coming today and one of the best ways that we can take that love that Jesus gives us and share it with others is just by making sure that we serve that we're a light and that if people have questions we're not afraid to answer if you don't know the answers come get one of these it explains it so easily God loves you and God loves all people whether they love him or not and that's the most amazing love of all so I bid you farewell today with just a couple announcements. If you would like to hang out with your brethren, and I guess I don't have a word for the lady part, but we have a ladies and a men's event coming up very shortly uh, where you guys can get fed off of each other and to encourage each other and be able to join and uh, just make yourself stronger. Honestly, it's, it's all about that muscle, just continuing to be in discipline of God and being around others that love him. And so the ladies are doing a, um, basically a, a meeting. Uh, they're going to have a Bible conference, or no, I'm sorry, a, a Bible study. And I do believe that starts on the 17th. Is that right, Yvonne? And what time? 9.30. And it'll be over here at the, the building. Yep. So the building over there at 9.30 on the 17th for the ladies. Men, you don't get quite that easy or get off quite that easy. Uh, we're taking you on a hike. <laughs> and so uh, literally... <laughs> Uh, so Ramik, who's not here with us today, as well as Rudy, who is like an awesome arborist, are going to have a great men's hike, and it's coming up uh, this next Saturday, the 13th, and we're going to meet over at Carambola and do the Tide Pools hike. But it will be a very interesting version of the Tide Pools hike in that Rudy and uh, Ramik will be giving us a little bit of history and also telling us about some of the trees and the foliage and things like that. So we'll get a little education as we sweat it out there. So, men, I think this is just the way it's supposed to be. So, yes, Miss Yvonne. One more time. There's a book. They need to sign up ahead of time to get the book. There you go. Uh, if you will text 94,000 Connect SDX, and then uh, you, you see how much I get here. I, I should carry a notebook around. Uh, if you'll do that uh, and get signed up for the women's thing or call the office or get with Miss Yvonne, she just wants to make sure she orders the book you guys are going to be going through. So um, I bid you farewell. If you're visiting or you just need popcorn for the day, we've got a little thanks for popping in gift at the back. Uh, make sure you grab that on your way out the door and just uh, shake somebody's hand and tell them God loves them. Have a great day. Take care. We're gonna do you got one more. Else? Yeah, we got one more. Um, just... Uh, um, I don't know, listening to that and talking about God's love, I wanted to do one more song, uh, Reckless Love, you're familiar with it, um, if you need to walk out uh, as you're going, but this is one more opportunity to, to praise Him and worship Him, um, so if you want to join, sing along. I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. 
You have been so, so kind to me. out. Thank you, Father God, for today. Thank you for waking up this morning. Thank you for always keeping us in your thoughts and in your hearts, Father God. As we're sleeping, as we're resting, as we're not thinking of you, you're always thinking of us, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for always chasing us down, for thinking about us uh, as numerous as the grains of sand, beyond the number of grains of sand on, on, on the planet in existence, Father God. I just pray that every single person in this room walks with your light in everything that they do. Father God, just please bless us all abundantly, um, and just thank you for allowing us to be gathered in your name. In Jesus Christ, I pray. In Jesus Christ, name I pray.